What's up everybody? Today I'm gonna be doing something called photogrammetry. Uh, what photogrammetry is, you're pretty much taking photos of an image and then using that to render a virtual version of whatever that is that you took pictures of. Today, I'm gonna be making a photogrammetry copy of this Gurka. This is a little different from my other vlogs. Uh, when I first started them, they were kind of supposed to be like educational things of what I was doing in class. And it kind of evolved into me just doing whatever. But today I kind of want to bring it back to this because this is something that I think is pretty interesting. And I kind of want to share the process of me doing it for the first time. So I don't even know if it's going to be good or not, but let's try it out. All right, so before we start, I kind of want to talk about some of the basics of photogrammetry. I'm not going to really go into too much. So right now, I know three different versions of capturing images for photogrammetry. The first method is parallel access capture. The second is convergent access capture. And the third one is synchronized something photogrammetry rig. I don't even know that one. The method so. I'm going to be using is using a converging access pattern. What this does is you're pretty much creating a dome of photos around whatever it is your subject is. So if I'm, what I'm gonna be doing is I'm gonna have a subject placed on the table and I'm gonna be taking pictures all around that subject in 360 and then also in a dome shape. That way I can get photos of every single angle of that object. The first thing you wanna do is make sure your uh, photos are sharp. To get those sharp photos, you're gonna wanna use a high shutter speed. And what this is gonna do is it's gonna cause the shutter to really fast that way it's a split second and so i'm going to want to use a shutter speed that's just fast enough to get rid of camera shake but then also slow enough to let in enough light so i'll probably use a shutter speed of around 1 1 or 1 200. the second camera setting that you need to dial in is the iso the iso is what controls the camera's sensitivity to light so the lower your iso is the less grain you'll have in your image but it will also let in the least amount of light the higher your ISO is, the more light your camera will let in, but it will introduce more grain as you go higher. So we need to find a nice balance between amount of grain and amount of light we want to let in. Now, depending on your camera sensor, that will uh, also make a little bit of a difference. If you have a full frame sensor, it's going to let in a little bit more light and be a little less noisy than if you use a crop frame sensor. And that's what I'm using. Today, I'll be using my Sony a6300. It's a crop sensor camera. Um, it's not as good as my full frame camera, but it'll get the job done. I'm deciding to use this because the camera files on it are a little smaller and are more easy to manage. And so I feel like if I use this camera, it'll use, it'll have just enough data for the computer to get a nice quality image without it taking up so much space with the raw files. The final camera setting that I have to set up is the aperture. And so what the aperture does is it controls the depth of field. By shooting at a high aperture, I'm able to get as much of the image sharp as I can, as opposed to shooting a low aperture. If I was shooting a, a you know, 1.4, or 1.2, 1.8, 2.8, those type of low apertures produce very shallow backgrounds. And that's good for portraits and those type of pictures. But in this case, I want a, a large depth of field and to be able to see as much as I can. So in this case, I might use a F8 or F12 to get all of the image in focus as opposed to just the eyes or whatever shallow depth of field I want with a lower aperture. The final thing we have to do on the camera is pick what type of lens we're gonna use. Um, another reason I chose to use the crop sensor camera is because when you do use a full frame lens on it, it does crop in and it makes it a little tighter. You wanna shoot tight because if you shoot wide, it's gonna give you lens distortion around the edge, but if you shoot nice and tight, it'll give you a nice crisp image of, uh, and it's kind of similar to what our eyes see. So now that I got the camera set up, it's time to start shooting photos around the object. So let's get it. So now that I've taken my pictures, it's time to upload the photos into the program and see how we did. If it sucks, we might have to do it again. But if not, hey, we'll see how it turns out. We'll see. So I wasn't going to do this, but I just want to see if there's anyone else out there that's like me. And so one thing that I have a tendency to do is I get distracted very easily. And so right now I was just cooking some sausages on the thing. And while cooking those sausages, I was trying to make me some Eggo waffles. And long story short, I ended up burning three whole sets of Eggos while I was cooking these sausages. 
and vibing out to this music. I done let my egos burn three times, so is there anyone else that just like kind of gets distracted or does stuff like that? Like, I don't know. I feel like everyone does stuff like that. Let me know. Two, so first I burnt these ones, then I burnt these ones. <laughs> All right, so right now I'm in the middle of editing and kind of masking off my little character or whatever. I think I took the pictures a little dark. They're not showing up as bright as I thought they would on here. So let me kind of show you real quick. Boom, so I'm right here. And so pretty much where these blue spaces are, I'm taking this red marker and I'm marking off what the actual figure is. And then I'm going to take the blue marker after that and then mask around what I don't want to be in there. So hopefully we could get it fixed and continue on. So yes, in this portion, I'm using the red and blue marker to mask off sections of the Aku Aku mask. This first render is called a sparse point cloud. They're pretty much rough points of the first version of all the photos being stitched together. Once you get the sparse point, you make your next render, which is called a dense point cloud. So what the dense point cloud is just the sparse clouds, except expanded upon. So it pretty much takes them and gives it a little bit more detail than there was before to kind of generate a more clear version of the image. After the dense point cloud, you move on to the, the mesh cloud. And so this is when you really start to get your texture and it become a whole item. All the points kind of come together and they start to create what your final item is going to look like. And then after the mesh, you're going to create your actual textured version. And pretty much what this does is it cleans up the mesh and gives you your final finished product. And so I think this turned out pretty good. I'm pretty happy with how this turned out. I honestly would have never thought it would have turned out this good. I would definitely say I'm proud of making this like usually I really don't like to do this type of stuff in the class, but I felt like I did a pretty good job at this and uh, I like how it turned out. I might go ahead and do it to more stuff. So right now it's about four o'clock Saturday afternoon and I'm done working on this. I've been working on this all weekend. I'm taking a break. Uh, I might throw some clips at the end of what, uh, of what else I do the rest of this weekend. But again, thanks for watching. Thanks for tuning in. Please like, comment, and subscribe. Thank you for watching. Uh, thank you for been watching. And just, uh, yeah, thank you. Uh, peace. We still out here, bro. But honestly, I'm lit as and having a good ass time. I probably won't even put in my vlog, but you know what? Like a one taken to the back. Same nigga walking track with you. Same nigga shot the track with you. Same nigga bought a sack with you. 19 telling two birds. LeBron!